Vassalization is an important part of Stellaris and is the easiest way to conquer an empire without claiming every system they control. So how do you get vassals? Well, there are a few ways. First way is to vassalize an empire through winning a subjugation war. The second is to propose subjugation to a friendly empire that is in acceptance of it. Third is to win a secret fealty war, where first an empire pledges secret fealty to you, and then you win a fealty war against their overlord. Another way is to have a weaker empire asked to be your subject, as well as making peace during a subjugation war with a weaker empire. Empires you want to subjugate must have the subjugation casus belly on them. The easiest way to get this is to have a stronger fleet, technology, and economic power than the target empire. Another way is to go to war and weaken the target empire until you have the subjugation casus belly and go to war with them again. Another is to stay naval capped at all times and raise your cap higher and higher as you can afford it. Work on your economy, build research labs, and work on your technology. So you've got a subjugation casus belly on the empire, now what do you do? If it's a friendly empire, immediately propose subjugation. When acceptance is checkmarked green, click propose or send offer. You can make it green by selecting agreement options that are more in favor of the target empire or the subject in other words. The target empire must not already have vassals or be an overlord. If this happens, you will have to go to war with them to vassalize them. If the target empire is unfriendly or hostile, then war is the only option. Click vassalize as the war goal. Take their systems till you win the war. If they are being stubborn, then go for a status quo and everything you have captured will become a new vassal. This is sometimes the better option as you may for whatever reason be unable to conquer all of their planets and systems. Secret fealty wars are blind chance. Basically become as powerful as you possibly can. And the second you get a secret fealty pledge from the target empire, go to war with their overlord that being the empire that owns them. Select Secret Fealty War, then win the war. You must win. A status quo won't work, so make sure you can utterly defeat the Overlord beforehand. After you get a vassal and some time has passed, you will be able to adjust agreement terms. There are so many different things you can do. You can integrate the target empire, though this is harder to do than before the Orion update, Integrating means dissolving the target empire and adding its systems and planets to your empire. You can decide how much diplomacy the target empire can engage in. Like most things here, the more freedom you give the target empire, the more acceptance and loyalty you get. You can decide if or how the target empire can expand. Regulating gives you influence every time they do so. Permitted nets you loyalty. Prohibited costs loyalty and stops the target empire from expanding. You can set a contribution from the Empire. The higher the slider, the more resources they give you. Be careful with this. It costs a lot of loyalty. And Rebellions will be more likely the more resources you take from the target Empire, since they will be too poor to make their population happy. So try not to bankrupt the Empire if you care about it at all. The basic slider taxes food, minerals, and energy credits from the target Empire. The advanced slider taxes alloys and consumer goods from the target empire. The research slider taxes research and the strategic slider taxes volatile motes, exotic gases, and rare crystals. A green percentage takes resources from the target empire and gives it to you. A red percentage takes resources from you and gives them to the target empire. With overlord conflicts, you can decide if the target empire teams up with you during defensive, offensive, or all wars, or no wars at all. With subject conflicts, you decide when you team up with the target empire during defensive wars only, offensive only, all wars, or none at all. Holdings is the amount of buildings you can build on the target empire's capital. Holdings are similar to branch offices in that they are buildings built on another empire's world. Sensors mean whether or not they see what you see. Subject types are basically what specialization you want your target empire to be. A vassal is your standard subject agreement. A tributary is a vassal except they only contribute resources and don't fight in any wars by default. A bulwark specializes in starbase defense and gets fleet bonuses inside the target empire. 
This requires the Overlord DLC. A Scholarium specializes in research generation at the cost of their naval power. This requires the Overlord DLC as well. A Prospectorum specializes in resource generation at the cost of research from the Overlord. This also requires the Overlord DLC. A Protector is a subject type that researches technologies the Overlord has by a faster rate. The Target Empire does not take research from you. Once you have finished selecting these options, have a green check mark and enough influence, click Proceed to send a new agreement. The subject types from the Overlord DLC such as Prospectorum, Scholarium, Bulwark, all level up once they completely convert to their specialization. Each level they get powerful bonuses related to their specialization. Prospectorum gets resource bonuses, for example. So just remember, the more freedom you give your vassal in the agreement, the more acceptance they will have. So if the proposal is a red X, then make selections that move it closer to a green check mark. So the common ways to do this are set it to integration prohibited, independent diplomacy, expansion permitted, zero or negative contribution, no overlord conflicts, all subject conflicts, holdings limit zero, unified censors. If all these are set and they still won't vassalize, then you'll have to go to war with them or forget it. Check to make sure they are not in a federation, nor an overlord themselves. Otherwise, you won't be able to vassalize diplomatically. By the way, like my new voice? Leave a comment and tell me what you think. Now back to the video. If they are already vassalized, then play with these settings until they accept. Once you do that, you can make a more demanding offer later. You can make a more demanding offer later when their loyalty is increased over time. You can raise loyalty by raising opinion diplomatically. So let's talk about Holdings. Holdings lets you build buildings on the Target Empire's homeworld. These buildings generally do something positive for the Overlord. The most important of these, in my opinion, is the Ministry of Truth. With these, the more vassals you acquire, the more influence you get monthly. So build the Ministry of Truth on every vassal. You can only build it once per vassal. Do that and you'll get way more influence to play with. You can use vassals to accumulate vast economic power. If you don't have the Overlord DLC, simply set every vassal's contribution to 15%. This may take several negotiations to pull off. That's okay. Each agreement makes your empire stronger. If you have the Overlord DLC and have multiple vassals, I recommend making at least one a Prospectorum. It usually doesn't cost as much research as you would think. The numbers are complicated, but 30% doesn't necessarily mean 30% of your research. Having a Scholarum is pretty powerful too and will offset the cost of having a Prospectorum. While specialized vassals convert to their specialization, it costs 3 influence a month. This is greatly offset by building multiple Ministry of Truth holdings. When setting war participation with your vassals, you can choose between a few strategies. The first is to set subject and overlord conflicts to defensive. So when you go to bully another empire, they usually won't be able to cross your vassal's territory to get to you. You can set overlord conflicts to all and subject conflicts to defensive. This way you can gang up on other empires when going to war. At the same time, you won't be dragged into every war your vassals initiate. Or you can set both to all, combining you and your vassal's fleets during any conflict. This way the enemy is never fighting just you. Of course, how you set this up is up to you. These are just some common ways to do it. Bulwarks are kind of a niche situation. What I don't like about them is that they take resources but only raise defenses in their borders. So the enemy can just go around them in most cases. Overall not worth the resource drain. So a good time to mess with agreements is when you're floating a lot of influence. Floating means you have a lot in storage. As agreement adjustments, especially major ones, can cost a lot of influence, especially if you're specializing. Again, building Ministry of Truth holdings on each vassal will help a great deal with influence problems. Oh, by the way, you can create a vassal out of a sector. Not sure what situations you would really want to do this, but it's an option. Keep in mind there are penalties for having more than one vassal, but there are many civics that get around this. Regardless of your build, if you plan on having lots of vassals, you can always get the Shared Destiny Ascension perk to negate that as well. During wars that your vassals are participating in, 
they will try to send fleets to follow your own fleets wherever they go. So while you can't rely on this alone to win, it certainly helps. Rule of thumb is to fight wars as if you alone were fighting them. The computer AI is just there to make things easier. Think of your vassal as a buff and a supplement to your forces, not a protector and a savior. Sometimes your vassal will help immensely, but it is impossible to predict, though you may be surprised at how helpful the computer AI is at times. Another thing to consider is making hyperlane networks on both your empires if you have the Overlord DLC. This makes it less likely for rebellions to happen. So something really annoying that can happen is the game giving you planets and systems for free that belong to your vassal after a war. I have done research and played countless games and I have not found a sufficient workaround yet for this. You can gift some of the planets and systems back to the vassal with the trade menu, but not always all of them. You can create a vassal out of the new systems using the planets and sectors menu. Other than that, if anyone has found an adequate solution, please leave a comment, I'd love to hear about it. Lastly, you get a ridiculous amount of points for having vassals, so scoop up as many as you can during your games. Even if you're not using them for anything at the moment, just having the added points to your score is worth it. I think some balance tweaks could be made there by Paradox, but only time will tell. I believe I have covered all the bases when it comes to vassalization and uses. If you like my stuff, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.